Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2020 Dodge Grand Caravan. So this is what our trailer hitch looks like installed on our vehicle here. Now this particular one has a hidden design, meaning the cross tube is actually tucked away behind the bumper and the only thing we can see is the receiver tube. This not only bakes, makes for the best overall appearance, it's also going to give our best ground clearance possible. Now what we can see, the receiver tube has a nice black powder coated finish which helps it blend in with the underbody paneling on the vehicle well and also protects the hitch from rust. So adding a trailer hitch to your Grand Caravan is going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use a trailer hitch for towing but let's say we wanted to hit the trails or if we needed to free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family on those long road trips, we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here has a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward. And it also has a 400 pound tongue weight rating, which is gonna be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify the vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the hitch or the vehicle. So our receiver tube is gonna be an industry standard size. It's gonna be two inch by two inch. And that's the most widely compatible with all of your accessories such as ball mounts, bike racks, and cargo carriers. Therefore, having this larger opening gives you a much greater variety to choose from. And on the side of our receiver tube, we have a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole that'll work with our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, this doesn't come with the hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your accessories are actually gonna come with their own. So you shouldn't need to worry about buying this separately. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. Those work great with both the larger Clevis style as well as the smaller S-type. So a couple measurements for you guys here. They're going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. And for this, you're looking at right around 13 and a quarter inches. So you'll use that when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. You'll use that when you're selecting a folding accessory so you can be sure that it doesn't contact the bumper while it's in that stowed position. And for this vehicle here, you're looking at right at three inches. So in regards to installation, this one really isn't that bad. It's definitely something a do-it-yourselfer can do at home by yourself. It doesn't really require any modifications and you just need basic common hand tools. There is one tool you're going to need you may not have, and that's a torque wrench but you can actually rent this for free from most local auto parts stores. But aside from that, again, everything is very straightforward. I would give yourselves around an hour or so, depending on your experience level. We'll walk you through the entire process step by step now. So the first step of our installation, we actually need to lower our exhaust. Now, in order to do this, there's gonna be a bracket attached to the frame with one bolt. So we need to remove that bolt with a 13 millimeter socket. Then once we have that bolt out, the bracket should come down and our exhaust should lower a few inches along with it. So it's kind of hard to see, but our bolt is going to be located kind of just directly behind the muffler up in this area here attached to the frame. So go ahead and get that out now. So there's what our bolt looks like. And our bracket sort of swung down there and it's kind of hard to tell, but our exhaust is loose now as well. So directly beside that hanger that we just removed, you may or may not have an air conditioning line running parallel across the frame. So if you do have that, you wanna take the included wire loom with your kit and just go ahead and place that over the smaller of the two lines up there. But again, that's only on certain models. We're gonna be removing the bolts securing to the bottom of the frame. So these are actually the ones we're gonna use for our hitch installation. So. The hardware we need is actually already on the vehicle, we just have to remove it first. Now in order to remove it, we're gonna need a 15 and an 18 millimeter socket. So there's gonna be three bolts over here on the driver's side, and then two bolts on the passenger side. Now the passenger side is gonna be super hard to see, so we're gonna show you over on the driver's side. So first we're gonna take our 15 millimeter socket, and you're probably gonna need a breaker bar for these bolts because they are kinda of tight. And we're gonna be removing this bolt here to start off with. And then we have two more bolts here, which are gonna be the larger 18 millimeter bolts that we're gonna need a socket for. So once I've broken them free, 
I'm going to switch over to my impact so I can get them out a little bit quicker. So there we go. There's one. That's the smaller of the three. Now we have two more back here. So now that we have our three bolts out over here on the driver's side, we'll just simply repeat those same few steps over on the passenger side. Just keep in mind there's actually only two bolts on the passenger side. So I noticed that once I removed my three bolts from the frame here, this plate inside, which actually has the weld nuts for our three bolts, sort of shifted to the inside. And the weld nuts are actually not lined up with our holes here. So that's gonna give us some problems when we go to reinstall our hitch. What we need to do is we need to take some sort of pry tool we basically just need to pry that block over there in order to get our holes to line up again. So you can use any one of these holes here, but basically we just need to sort of shimmy this over until the weld nuts line up with the holes in the bottom of the frame. Now with an extra set of hands, we can raise the hitch up into position. You do have to come over the exhaust on the passenger side first. So it looks like our plate has shifted inside the frame a little bit, so much so that I actually can't get our holes to line up. So what you're gonna have to do is, you're gonna have to take a screwdriver, stick it through one of the free holes here. I like to use the center one. And then you're gonna sort of use that to pry the holes into position so all your holes are gonna line up and you can insert your bolts. once we have all of our bolts into position, we can go ahead and tighten everything down using an 18 and a 15 millimeter socket. Now we'll come back with our torque wrench here and we'll torque everything down to the specifications listed in your instructions. Now keep in mind there is a different torque value for the smaller M10 and the larger M12 bolts. So we've got the hitch torqued down now, and if we look at the receiver tube, we're gonna notice that it's actually pushing on the bottom part of our bumper fascia. However, it's not pushing on it too much. In your instructions, they state that you can trim if you don't like it putting that stress on the plastic, but I really haven't seen any issues with not trimming it, and I prefer not to cut anything that we don't have to. So for our particular vehicle here, we won't be trimming any additional material out. We're just gonna let the bumper fascia rest on the receiver tube there, but if you guys would like to trim that plastic out at home, you're more than welcome to do so. You'll just, use do, you'll just follow the instructions there for your diagram, and you can use a Dremel tool to remove that material. But again, we really don't see any issues with the bumper fascia there pressing on the receiver tube, so we are not going to trim ours. Now all that's left to do is to re-secure your exhaust bracket over here on the passenger side. And that's going to do it today for our look at installation of the current trailer hitch receiver here on our 2020 Dodge Grand Caravan.